Welcome to Ask an Innovator. My name's Cole. I'm uh, so happy to have David Hodson, aka Boy Roland, here. As you know, Ask an Innovator is simply about the heartbeats comprising local innovation, creation, and ingenuity. Last week we had a newspaper publisher. Today we have an artist. Not just any artist. The gentleman next to me is a bit of an innovative superhero. The best definition of entrepreneurship is creativity. Creativity is defined by the artist. David Hodson has and is defining art in our lives and our community, whether you know it or not. We're going to talk a little bit today about the texture of art. We're going to talk today about the importance of art. We're going to talk today about the economics of art. David, thank you so much for being here, aka Boy Roland. Is it David Hodson or, or Boy Roland? Uh, let's, let's stick to Boy Roland. That's kind of my, my artist yeah. handle. So I love it. That's, that's what people would, would know me by for that. Great. Yeah. So I'm super excited to have you here today. There are so many questions that I have. Let's get kind of like the boring questions just out of the way right off the bat. Are you from Thunder Bay? Were you born in Thunder Bay? Are yes. you a Thunder Bay native? Yeah. Born, born and raised Thunder Bay. Um, there was about like just under a year I lived in Toronto, like kind of in my mid twenties. But other than that, yeah, I've always, I've always been here. Uh, yeah. Amazing. And so your career is in Thunder Bay. Do you, do you, do you, do you love Thunder Bay? Do you feel Thunder Bay is a, uh, a canvas that you can work from? Is, does it provide you with enough opportunity as an artist? Oh, absolutely. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it was really, it was it, one of the great things about uh, moving to Toronto was uh, not only just like having that experience as a human being, I think it's like really good to expand your horizons and see what you can, what there is out there uh, for you, but also uh, being there helped me recognize how much I love Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. and how much uh, what I was doing was more important in Thunder Bay and I was having more of an impact. I was there, like I was flying back to Thunder Bay mm -hmm. from Toronto to do, to do work mm -hmm. and eventually it was just like, why, like I, my work is in Thunder Bay. This mm -hmm. is where I have all of this uh, opportunity and support and it's, I, I love it there. Like, so why not, why not go back to the place that fulfills me the most? And it's amazing. And I can speak on behalf of Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay loves you. <laughs> when I f moved back to Thunder Bay about four or five years ago, I was driving around and I was, seeing, I was seeing art. I was seeing street art. I was seeing art on the side of buildings. I was seeing art up high, kind of tucked away in inconspicuous spots. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I've arrived. Thunder Bay has a big city swagger. A lot of these installations are yours. How many pieces around the city, let's call it street art, how, yeah. many, how many street art pieces do you have around the city? Do you think ballpark? Ballpark? Um, I've, I've worked on, I would say, at least uh, 10 to 20. Um, I'm, that's, that's like, yeah, that's my ballpark. Some mm -hmm. of them have, have been done all by myself, and some, a lot of them have been done with the, the Diactive Art Collective, right. run through Definitely Spear Art Gallery, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's been a lot, I guess, when, mm -hmm. <laughs> over the years. Yeah, amazing. You have you have um, a few pieces. There's um, so specifically the Mike Smarts. Is that what it is? On the on the back of the or the uh, Max Milk. What do they? What are the? What well, are Mike's, the yeah the, the convenience the, like, stores. Conven yeah, Mike's. Yeah. <laughs> no, Max I, Mike's some my, version. <laughs> Max. Some place to buy yeah, milk and Max. coffee. Max. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Here's who I, I think, I mean, I've, I'm a big fan of your art for a very long time, and, I, and I love your style, and I, th and, I, and I really, really think it's fantastic. Now, I'm traveling around, I'm popping into a Max, because yeah. that's what it's called, and I'm seeing this outrageous art on a Max. I mean, a Max is, is a Max. It's a convenience store. It doesn't really, really scream art, but you've been, now, how, how did the, this art, how did your art end up on Max? And there's how many Max in Thunder Bay do you have your art on? Uh, two of them, yeah. We yeah. did, uh, what happened was we, uh, like, Diactive, the art collective that mm -hmm. I, I that, that's, the, that's the reason I started really spray painting in the first place was uh, with the collective. And um, the, at the time, the Max convenience stores were uh, kind of being plagued with uh, robberies mm. and uh, vandalism and all sorts of stuff and uh, they were looking for um, positive ways to try and help their situation and make things better and, and, mm -hmm. and 
kind of connect with the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, they saw the work that we were doing uh, with Die Active, these, these, all these young artists creating like graffiti art uh, and there being like a really great like public response. And mm -hmm. so they approached us and they wanted us to do some, some mural work for mm -hmm. them. So, you know, cover up like the, all of the bad negative stuff, vandalism that was happening on, on their buildings. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was this great experience where mm -hmm. um, we we're all able, like all us young artists go and uh, paint whatever we were feeling and express yeah. ourselves on this like corporate building. Right. And, uh, and to like not have too much of like, their, you know, their, their message or, or agenda. It was just yeah. like, here you go. And did we they get, give you creative liberties with it? Were you able to? Yeah, it's like, you know, they, I think like at first they had their ideas of things that they wanted, but we were just sort of like, we're like, that's not what Diactive is about. Diactive is about empowering the mm -hmm. youth, empowering the artists and allowing them to express themselves right. and, and, and show their creativity. So it's it's really amazing opportunity and it's really, uh, I don't know, it's, it's inspiring and uplifting for young artists to be given that, not only the opportunity, mm -hmm. but um, to have that kind of recognition from just like adults, sure. businesses, people in, in power to be mm -hmm. like, we recognize you and appreciate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, it was a tremendous response from the community. Tremendous, yeah, uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. It really stood out to me. What also stands out to me is the whole idea of if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, It seems like street <laughs> art has really defined that in a lot of ways. Forever people are tagging, bombing, uh, putting graffiti on the sides of buildings, land and landlords have essentially said, well, it's going to happen anyways. Let's bring in an expert, Roy yeah. Roland. You do the mural. And the code is, is that other people wouldn't tag over your mural and it would look beautiful yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, we've been like, it's, it's been super, it's super effective because mm -hmm. uh, you have like, you have these, uh, these pe people who are, who are vandalizing or express, expressing themselves in, in, in different various ways. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it's negative. Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to turn that into like a positive thing yeah. um, is, is awesome. And it, it, be, it does become like you, you, get, you get a positive uh, outcome from mm -hmm. uh, allowing pe like young people to just be creative and express themselves and uh, then it also becomes like, like a preventative measure from mm -hmm. even like having the, the walls of like vandalized or revandalized. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 awesome. Like I think maybe only like once or twice we've had like a little something like right over top of it tagged on it, and it's yeah. just like it's like oh little quick oh just erase that little star that someone scribbled on in the middle of the night one time, and yeah. it's 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 great and it adds to the city. Mm -hmm. and the culture mm -hmm. and and it, it just livens things up I like, like driving around now like once after I started doing uh, graffiti and that you just you just see walls and you're like oh that that wall needs a painting on it because it's so <laughs> you just see these blank canvases yeah. everywhere now it's, have you ever knocked on someone's door and said hey <laughs> I have my paint would you like me to I've wanted to yeah. so many times right. yeah it's just like it's like you've got a nice wall yeah. Like it needs some art on it. Sure it does. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's fantastic. You mentioned uh, two things that really stood out to me. You mentioned youth. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about youth. We're going to talk, uh, talk about money a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the things that you do that inspire you, that keep you going, some personal things, some spiritual things, some honest things. Um, and uh, we're also going to talk about the, uh, the economics of, of art a little bit. Boy Roland, one of our absolute premier artists in Thunder Bay. Be back after the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Ask an Innovator. Boy Roland sitting to my left. We're going to dive into some Interesting, what I like to think is interesting. We're gonna start off with a, with a quote. We're gonna talk a little bit about art. We're gonna talk a little bit about the economics of art and some, uh, we're trying to squeeze some, some honesty out of David about, uh, about art, because art, art is interesting. Uh, here's a quote. Now, this might be, I'm gonna put you a bit on the hot seat with right. this quote, okay? You're gonna, I wanna see if you know who this quote is from. Oh, I argue. All right, there's a lot of pressure here, okay? <laughs> um, 
I'm not super reflective of what I do. <laughs> who, who said that? Yeah, that was me. That was you. Yeah. So in the show, we, <laughs> we use quotes quite regularly. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I've ever quoted a guest and put it back to you. So that was your quote. I find that quote fascinating due to the fact that artists typically are introspective, they're reflective. You think artists would be these deep, thoughtful, um, kind of mind-bending people. You're, you're not reflective of what you do? Not terribly. I love uh, it. Like, um, That's almost conflicted and confounding to me. I think it's yeah, so neat. I think, uh, I, and part, part of that I think is like I am so like focused and thinking about like a lot of things in life. Mm. And it's like all that stuff is I think where like my brain is really like analyzing mm -hmm. and um, reflecting and contemplating and trying to like decipher the, the complexities of just my existence itself mm. and then where I'm going and what I'm doing mm -hmm. that when it comes time to do my art, it's just like, it's just like shut all that off. Mm. I don't like, it's, it's, uh, I think it really is just a matter of my, my art being uh, something that's necessary for mm -hmm. me to do. Mm -hmm. It's a necessity. It's not something that I, 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 I plan like intensely mm -hmm. where I'm like, I have uh, like a, a mission statement of who I am as an right. artist and, <laughs> and uh, these are the issues that, that uh, are important to me that I like to tackle. It's just like, it's just like something inside of me that's like things just kind of get out and I, I can't keep them in. And I just have to, I have to do it. I mm -hmm. have to create. Mm -hmm. It's just a it's a necessity more than like um, an an outlet for uh, deeper issues or topics. I love it. Yeah, you are a true multimedia multimedium artist. You Ooh. work in all different types of uh, materials, paints, sculpture, uh, graphics. Well, why not? Why not? There's like it, there's so many things and there's so much to consume and so yeah. much so many different ways to be able to express yourself. Mm -hmm. I I've um, I can remember going to university and like right away people were like, oh, so what, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm I, in art school, right? And you're like, they're like, well, what, what kind of art do you do? I'm like, mm -hmm. I, well, I do art. Right. What do you do? <laughs> like, it's like, what do you mean? I don't know what's like, I have no context for what you're saying. It's like, it's like yeah. well, I'm a painter. Right. Like, what, what's your art? I'm like, oh, like I, I draw, I paint, I sculpt. I like, I'm listing all these things. Cause like, I never thought about just being one thing. Yeah. Cause is it, it, is it cliquey? Are there other are uh, the lithographers today? And, and, and <laughs> do they stick to their own group, and then the, the oil no, and then the was, acrylic guys have their. Own there was definitely like that was one of the, like the good things with like university was like uh, you were required to take different right. things, especially yeah. in first year. First year, you're like taking a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, so no matter what, you, they you're forced to experience different stuff, which is great because mm -hmm. sometimes you know some art some artist might be. Uh, like, like, oh, I can't draw a stick figure. You know, mm -hmm. most common thing I, I think I hear as an artist, people say that to me. Mm -hmm. It's just such the cliche, but it's like, maybe you're, it's like, you don't have to be a stick figure artist. You don't have to be, uh, be able to draw realism or even be able to draw. Mm -hmm. you, like, you might turn out to be the most amazing sculptor or right. potter. You may have like a creative uh, ability or, or something in you that allows you to express in a non- uh, like realistic way, like that's mm -hmm. like that's the 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 big thing that people see as like the the height of art is right. like realism. But it's like if you mm. you got cameras for for realism, sure. Like uh, I'm going to try and get you to talk about the state that you go into while creating a piece, and I'm going to put this forward first, uh, just to give our viewers a little bit of insight. Over the last three days. I've been participating in um, some uh, financial training. I've been, I did a talk the other night. I went into a room of 70 people to do a talk on finance. Finance is typically pretty dry and yeah. pretty boring. I walk into the room and there's Boy <laughs> Roland with a wall. I mean, it's got, it had to have been 300, 400 square feet, this wall, this brick wall. And he's creating what was literally a masterpiece of art. In the background, <laughs> while this talk was going on, you managed to stay focused, you manage to stay in the artistic zone while 70 people are kind of trying to listen to me but really looking at you. How, <laughs> what state were you in? I was watching you do this, it was amazing. What state, you're up ladders, you have all kinds yeah. of different paint and I mean, 
tell me the state that you go in to stay focused on something like that. Um, how do you describe the state of one's mind? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I guess like, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a zone mm -hmm. where like you kind of, uh, especially with, with, with the mural that I was working on that you were watching, it was a lot of um, improv, mm. really. Because yeah. uh, like, you, know, you start off with a design and you've got, it's like, it's like ah, here's my rough outline, but really once you get started, you know, it's almost can be a detriment to like adhere too hard to it. Right. So it's a lot of like reconsuming what you've already thought you're going to do and like mm. trying to output it as something else. Mm. And uh, I guess like, I don't know, with like a large group of people kind of being like literally right beside me. <laughs> it, was so, it was so interesting. Um, I, think, I, I think being able to be okay with that it probably has, comes a lot with doing like just the, the public art. Because right. you know, you're yeah. out there spray painting a wall mm -hmm. and you've got people coming by all the time. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, that's a little more, you usually get people chit-chatting with you a little more outside. But like, um, yeah, I know. I think it just comes down to like having had experiences like that. Like I've mm -hmm. done live, live graffiti art Mm. next to like oh, right. a stage uh, right. of like during a concert right. for yeah. like huge huge right. performers happening and yeah. and uh it's uh y everything just kind of qu quiets out mm -hmm. and uh, uh you're just really just like in your head mm -hmm. so i in the creative zone yeah you walked in this morning into into the studio and i could see you completed this piece last night yeah you walked into the studio today, and I know you fairly well. You walked yeah. into the studio today. I could see in your eyes <laughs> I, and, and your, your body language and your expression, I could see this deep sense of satisfaction. You were just oozing satisfaction. Uh, Do you feel a sense of euphoria when you complete a piece like yeah, this? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah, euphoria, relief. Uh, accomplishment. It's accomplishment. Yeah. Because um, it really is a battle mm. every time you set out to do a piece because you're like, you're fighting against... Uh, whatever it is you're working with, you know, you're fighting against the materials, you're fighting <laughs> against the wall, and you're trying to like make it so you're fighting with with them, not against. And you know, even like your uh, your own mind, mm. like making sure you're like on the right track, and and your 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 brain is doing the things that you want it to to uh, get your creative mm -hmm. uh, mode out there onto the piece you're working with. So. Uh, yeah, it was it was like it was a surprise, really. Like I, I thought I was going to be there for another like seven hours into like the the early hours of the morning. I was like, I'm going to come to this interview with like mm -hmm. two hours of sleep, and uh, all of a sudden I'm looking at it. I'm just like, I guess I'm done. And I, I guess just, I'm done. Yeah, I, I, and you just and just walk away. Yeah, I just like was looking at the wall. I'm just like, right, I've already done all the things I thought I had to do. And it was it was this really wonderful like I've never surprised myself by being done something uh, <laughs> and not being aware of it. Amazing. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this piece that we we're, we're, we describe. I might even tell you where it is for you to go down and take a look at it because it's really worth it. And we're going to talk about a word David used: accomplishments. When we get right back, stay with us. Ask an innovator, Boy Roland. Welcome back to Ask an Innovator, here with Boy Roland, my personal favorite artist. We're gonna to talk to David a little bit right now for the next nine minutes or so about art and money. It doesn't seem like, it seems like a few people can make a lot of money by doing a little bit of art, but it seems like for the most part, what's this whole idea of a, of a starving artist? Is, there, is it true, do artists need to be starving? Can artists make money? Yeah, oh, ours can definitely make money. Um, I mean, starving is also like uh, kind of good for the soul a little bit, I think. Uh, it's just like encouraging. Encouraging, it's driving. <laughs> it's, yeah, well said. Yeah, yeah I think uh, yeah. in whatever way it is, it's important not to get too comfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. it, just to keep yourself motivated and driven. Uh, yeah. So I, I think there's like almost a bit of a romanticism about the idea of the starving artist. Right. But I don't think that necessarily has to be the case mm -hmm. um, and I've like I've I've been doing this now for gosh 
it's going to be like yeah, three three years in in May. I think as a professional April, artist, would you, as as full yeah. as being a full time uh, artist, like yeah. And you're busy. Yeah, yeah. You're booked. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's I've it's tried a lot. I've tried to commission a few things from you, <laughs> and I know how busy you are. It's like call call me next month. Yeah. You know what I what I love about you too is is that I and I love how entrepreneurial you are. I love that you get you know when we when we do work together, you do a piece for me. You send me an invoice. You know, and it has a has a, a an invoice number on it. It, it, it I can't remember. It may or may not have a GST number on. I mean, it's it's professional. I mean, it, you're looking at art as a business. Yeah. Do you think that artists don't do that enough? Is that is that a fair to, thing to say? Do you think that's why you're you're successful because you've looked at it art as a a profession? Perhaps. Um, I think. I think it's hard um, in some ways because. You don't get uh, like when I went to like when I went to art school like we didn't there was no there was very little practical mm-hmm. learning of right. like hey here's what you do when you actually get out there right. and and like they, right. there was a little bit yeah but in my opinion not enough like it, it wasn't it, a when you went to university you went to university here yeah, in Lakehead yeah there wasn't a, a business component or or a lot enough business component yeah to, there was like w- right there was like a one one yeah. semester class that right. kind of skims the surface of of a lot of that stuff like mm-hmm. grant writing and things like that mm-hmm. but um, yeah and I, I think that makes it difficult because no one's really no one really gives you guidance mm-hmm. in that in that regard so I think. Um, and it took it took me a long time to figure it out. It was one of these things where I'm like, I know I want to do this, I don't know how. And I had to figure it all out by my like by myself yeah. on my own. Yeah. So uh, it's like you know, people won't even tell you. It's like it's like how do I know what to charge for my art? Mm-hmm. Nobody's there to tell you. Mm-hmm. No, like the the best advice you'll get is like, well, make sure you're being paid for your supplies and your time mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, there's a, a bit of a formula, but mm-hmm. sometimes like, somebody's not having any concept or even a range of a dollar value mm-hmm. of how to work with these things. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it was a lot of just figuring things out on my own and the trial and error of mm-hmm. it. Uh, I can speak from firsthand experience. There's part of business that I love. I mean, I also love the creative side of things, the, the marketing side of things. There's a side of things that I don't love so much, which is the kind of the collecting money side of things, yeah. the administration side of things, sitting down and doing paperwork side of things what what and, and is it fair to say that you're in the same boat with that or do you like the administrative part of the business I, I i i like it and i don't like it um i don't like it when i find i'm spending more time doing the administrative stuff than the mm-hmm. actual work mm-hmm. where it's like you know sometimes it'll be like hey, i spent most of my week responding to emails and just like communicating with people mm-hmm. uh that that can be challenging when you're like you're trying to be creatively focused, mm-hmm. but um, excuse me, I think uh, numbers. Yeah, I, I, I like numbers, yeah. and I've used all numbers right. to like calm myself down. All yeah. like it, like as as a as a coping mechanism in university, where I'd be like freaking out because I just have yeah. way too many projects on the go, and I'd be like, okay, break it down. How many hours is this going to take? How many hours is this going to take? How many hours do you have until you're right. done? And as, if I could line it all up and make it all make sense, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you have uh, 10 hours uh, of work time mm. to do that you don't actually physically have. So mm. you somehow got to make up for that 10 hours. At least I know. Yeah. I know I've got 10 extra hours of work to do mm. that I've got to cram in. And if I can uh, quantify it into something I can digest, I feel so much better. Fantastic. So yeah, I think that helps a lot. You mentioned numbers. Perfect segue. I, I couldn't have asked you to create a better segue. <laughs> so I have some numbers here for you. Yeah. And I we'll just kind of as a group digest these numbers. Um, number 20, 75.1 million dollars. Here's the second set of numbers, and I'll describe number one, 250 million dollars. So number 20, 75 million dollars is the 20th most expensive painting in the entire world uh, by Mark Rothko. Nice. It's, it's called Royal Red and Blue. This painting looks like a royal red line on top of a blue line. Yeah. $75.1 million. <laughs> the next one, Paul Cezanne, Players, is the most expensive painting in the world, $250 million. 
it looks it's 19 1890 it looks like a true masterpiece i compare these two paintings together one is worth 80 million one worth 250 million one looks like a master painted it and i'm going to sound really ignorant but i have to do this just for yeah. the, for for the for the for the point of doing it the second one the number, the 20th most expensive painting in the world looks like my 8 year old daughter could have painted it yeah how do you respond to this well i think there's a lot of things with art history cuz like uh, I hated art history when I was in university. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like I don't care, uh, but then I I, I realized uh, being going to art galleries, which I love to do, and and I love looking at the art. Um, I don't necessarily care all that much about what year it was painted in or uh, all the the silly little information they expect you to write on tests. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I'm walking around with friends, and they're like, "Well, what's this? And why is this important?" And and I'm like, I'm regurgitating all these things. I'm like, "Oh, I actually picked stuff up." And like uh, I think about like a, like a, with like a Rothko, you you have to see it in real life mm -hmm. because um, the way his paintings look, there's like a, there's a vibration to mm -hmm. him. There's like he, he paints these layers, thin layers of like the, all these different reds and all these different blues on top of each other, all these thin thin layers. So when you sit there and you stare at it, you just you're staring at it a while. You're, you're like you're like oh yeah, this is a a big dumb red and blue painting. <laughs> Why is this here? Why is it eighty million dollars? Yeah, and you're staring at it, staring at it, and you're like, "That's this is so dumb." And all of a sudden, you start you you start to like your eyes start to do this thing, and you get these these vibrations. You start to see these like the colors are almost kind of changing. And it's it's I thought the same thing when I was in uh, art history. I'm like, I'm like yeah. big dumb red painting, great. And right. then I we went to uh, we went on a, a trip, and I saw one in real life. I was like, "Holy smokes, this is amazing!" And uh, a lot of these. Uh, these artworks that became famous, it's like they're, they're famous um, because what the art, what the, you know, the, move, the new movement that was like the new hip thing after the last one where, you know, there's all these famous people from this movement and all these famous people from this other one. It's like always like a response to what happened before. It's like, hey, we're the new rebels. We're the badasses. Right, right. Uh, we're the tough people of art being like, we're not going to do what they're doing, we're gonna reject that and create something new that hasn't been seen before. So it's one of those things where we, look, we have this in abundance of art history and you look back and we've seen all this stuff and uh, sometimes stuff is, in, we don't realize that like, well this was important because mm -hmm. this had never been done before and no one had ever experimented with that. I so appreciate you yeah. shedding some light on that for me. <laughs> I'm going to um, wind things up here with David Hodson. I mean, that was, that was sincerely the best description of that painting I have ever had, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, TV shows is Mad Men. Don Draper has been known for many, many quotes. One of his best quotes, I think, but what is happiness? It is a moment before you need more happiness. When you're driving around Thunder Bay, and you all of a sudden feel happy, it's probably because you saw one of Boy Roland's art pieces that piqued your interest and piqued your emotions. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, cool. Such a pleasure. You're a huge inspiration. Thunder Bay is lucky to have Boy Roland. See you next week. <laughs>